welcome to the So Essential vlog. In today's video, I thought it would be nice to take you from start to finish with one of my sewing projects. Um, and what I'd like to do is fast forward through the boring bits, so the cutting out and that sort of thing. But if there's tips or techniques that I think you might find useful, we've slowed the video down to real time and we'll focus in on those bits, but you will see every stage of the making recorded. So I've chosen something nice and simple. I've chosen a simplicity pattern, 1366. It's a Cynthia Rowley design and I've chosen View C, which is the simple cami top. And I'm making it in our Mystique satin backed crepe, um, which is a John Caldor fabric. I've chosen the fuchsia pink colour. It comes in a wide range of colours. Um, it's a really lovely quality fabric. And the reason that I've chosen that is it's going to go with another one of my Make Nine makes, which is this Simplicity 2154 pencil skirt, which I've made in our John Caldor Ohio fabric. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy watching me making this. And I'm just gonna start now by cutting the pattern out. So the next step is pinning my pattern pieces to the fabric and cutting the fabric out. I've ironed the pattern pieces to eliminate any creases, I've washed and pressed the fabric and I've folded the fabric with the salvages together at the edges. I'm going to be using scissors to cut out my fabric, although you could use a rotary cutter and a cutting board, which would be some people's preference for slippery fabrics like this. But I've always just been taught to use good old fashioned scissors, so that's the way I like to do it. And the only thing I need to be aware of here is that this pattern is cut on the bias. So there's a line on the pattern pieces which shows me where the straight of grain should run. So I just need to make sure that that line runs level with the salvages at the edge of the fabric so the pattern pieces will be actually on an angle as I pin them to the fabric. So off I go on to the next stage. Once I cut the fabric out, I've ironed some iron-on interfacing onto my facings as the pattern suggests and I've also marked any little dots or circles on the pattern with tailor's tack so I know where the strap should be attached to the top and to the facings. I've got my sewing machine set up with my walking foot on it and the reason I'm using a walking foot is because it is a slippery fabric and the, the walking foot will prevent the fabric from feeding through the machine at different rates, it'll feed it through evenly so that it'll stitch evenly. I've also set my overlocker up for a three thread overlock and I've just tested some scraps of fabric and adjusted the differential feed just to get the best results possible from that because I'll be using that to finish the seams and I'll also be using it to make the straps for the top. Um, so on to the fun bit now, the sewing. I'm going to start by stay stitching the neckline, sewing the side seams and finishing the side seams and then as I said I'll be using my overlocker to um, create the straps and I've got a really cool little trick that I want to share with you there so I'll slow down to show that to you. So now I'm going to show you a great trick for making the straps for the cami top. I'm going to make them on my overlocker and I've set it up for a three thread overlock. And I'm going to start by running a long chain of stitches off on the overlocker longer than my strap. So I've got a nice long chain of stitches there and I've got my fabric for my strap here. Now what I need to do is position that chain of stitches down the centre of the strap and then I need to fold the strap right sides together so I've chosen to make my top using the matte side of the fabric. So I'm folding it right sides together like so, lining up the raw edges 
and I want the chain of stitches to be running down the fold here so I want it to be away from the edge, the raw edge here where I'm going to be stitching so I need to position it right inside that fold and then it says to do a 3 8 seam on the pattern because obviously you want them to be nice narrow Rolu, Rolu straps. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce that, but um, I know that to get a 3 8 seam, I should line the edge of my fabric up with this marking here because it's 3 8 from where the needle is to where that marking is. So, bearing that in mind, I'm just going to lift the foot of my overlocker just to position the fabric correctly, and I'm going to line that up the edge of the fabric with the uh, marking that I've, I've mentioned earlier and start stitching. Now what I want to do is take this really steady because I need to keep repositioning the chain of stitches to make sure they're down the fold of the fabric and I need to make sure that I'm keeping everything in line with the 3 8 seam and away I go again. So again, just making sure the edges are folded over and meeting nicely, the raw edges here, and that my chain of stitches is away from the actual line of stitching. And once again doing that, and that's important because you're going to be using that chain of stitches to turn the strap through, so you don't want them to get caught because you won't be able to turn your strap through them. Once again, just taking it nice and steady, there's no rush, it's just important to get it right. And this method should save you some time when you're turning it through. So we're almost there now, just the last few stitches. And again, repositioning. So we've sewn to the end, <clears throat> now for the clever bit we're going to turn the strap through. So I've got my chain of stitches here which I'm just going to keep pulling gently and then I've got a bamboo knitting needle which I'm just going to use to help me turn the, um, start the strap off. So I'm just going to use my bamboo knitting needle just to poke the ends into the, um, the tunnel that you've created if you like on the strap. So you can use an awl or a knitting needle or anything really that's that will enable you to just poke those first few bits of fabric in. And then I'm gently going to pull the chain of stitches but you don't want to pull it too um, hard because you can, break, you can break the chain of stitches and obviously then you wouldn't be able to turn it through. And it can be quite tricky because it is quite a narrow strap but you just need to be gently pulling the chain of stitches and then trying to work the fabric over at the end and again because it is a very narrow strap it can be quite difficult to do this but if you just keep working that bit of fabric over at the end and keep putting the chain of stitches eventually you will be able to turn your strap through and you will feel it start to go so I'll just keep Pulling, I can feel it turning through, keep working that bit at the end over the edge, keep going and that's it, it's turning through nicely now and there we have it, all the way through and there I have my strap ready for my cami top. So I now have two finished straps, the next step is to attach the straps to my top using the markings that I made with my tailor's tacks to show me where to position them and lining them up with the raw edges of the top and I'll be basting them to the right side of the top and then I'll also be stitching the side seams of the facings together, right sides together as well and pressing open those seams and finishing them. The next 
step is to attach the finished facings to the top. So I'll pin the facings in place, right sides together with the top, matching up the notches and the side seams. And then I'll stitch a 5 8 seam all the way around the neckline and the arm holds to secure it. But what I will do is leave a 3 quarter of an inch gap at the back, which will enable me to insert the other end of the strap. Once I've attached the facings, I'll trim and clip the seams. So just clipping any curved edges to make sure that the facing will turn nicely through to the inside of the garment. Once I've done that, I'll turn the facing to the inside of the garment, insert the other end of the strap, turn the facing back to the outside and stitch that into place. And then finally, I'll press the facing away from the top and stitch through the seam allowances, attaching them to the facing in order to understitch and prevent the facing from rolling to the outside of the top when I'm wearing it. And then for further security I suppose. I'll also do the same with the side seams. I'll just attach the side seams of the facing to the side seams of the top and all of those steps will just give me a really good finish and prevent this fa facing from rolling out to the right side of the top. Once all of that's done the last step is a nice simple one and that is to just stitch the hem. So I'm going to do a narrow hem as the pattern suggests. So I'll press the hemline at 5 eighths of an inch like so and then I'll press the raw edge of the uh, fabric up to meet the fold where I've um, pressed the 5 8 seam so it'll look something like that. I'll pin that in place, stitch it in place, one last good press and the top should be ready to wear. Okay, so the top's looking good. We're almost finished now. We're at the final stage, which is doing the hem. Now, I did say previously I was going to do a narrow hem by pressing it up and pressing it up again. But actually, when I looked at the fabric and I spoke to Angela about it, we thought it would be adding a bit of a necessary bulk to this top. And Angela suggested an alternative finish, which is to simply three thread overlock the raw edge of the hem, press it in place, and then stitch through the overlocking um, to secure it and finish the hem. And I'll have a nice narrow hem with a minimal amount of bulk, um, which would be really suitable for this sort of top. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now.
So I'm pleased to bring you the finished Simplicity Cami Top. I'm really, really pleased with it. Can't recommend this pattern highly enough. It was a dead, quick, simple make. You could easily rustle this up in an evening. Um, it took me a little bit longer because I was filming it every step of the way. Um, but yeah, really highly recommend it. It's a great wardrobe staple for your spring summer wardrobe. I'll be wearing this loads perfectly on trend with the current 90s trend at the moment as well. Um, one of my favourite features about it is the hem finish that I chose to do after following Angela's advice. Rather than doing a narrow hem as suggested by the pattern, which was pressing the fabric up and pressing it up again and would have created extra bulk, I overlocked the edge and then stitched it in place. And I will show photos of this on our blog if you want to see it up close. But it's a really nice delicate finish for a top like this where you want a really narrow hem. The fabric's gorgeous. We've got the satin on the other side, so it feels really nice against my skin. And I think it drapes and hangs really nicely as well. Much better quality than anything I'd be able to get on the high street for the same sort of price or a reasonable price. So overall, really, really pleased. The only thing I would um, remember next time is that I think the straps are possibly just a little bit wider at the back at the end. And that's just because I probably veered off slightly when I got to the end of the strap. Sometimes I get a bit excited that I've done that bit and I think I probably just veered off slightly but I can live with that that's fine so yeah overall a great make I hope you've enjoyed watching it please like and subscribe if you have I'll put links to the blog so that you can follow the blog post when I do blog about it and next time I do a vlog I'm really excited to bring you a fabric haul so we've been doing a lot of fabric shopping recently and I'll look forward to sharing all of those with you and I'll see you next time